Now, finding buried treasure might sound like something out of a film, sound like a childhood dream, but one detectorist in Suffolk has done just that. George Ridgway has unearthed one of Britain's largest collections of Roman and Iron Age coins, with a few dating back all the way to 206 BC. Some of the 748 coins will now go into museum collections, but the rest are due to be auctioned off, and they could fetch a hefty price, as our reporter Alex Dunlop found out. Oh, it's too stuck together. Oh, my God. For George Ridgway, this was a real wow moment. Poles keep finding silver coins. <laughs> Five years on, George has returned to the field in Suffolk where he discovered what's been called the Helmingham Hoard. 748 Roman and Iron Age coins, one of the largest collections ever unearthed in Britain. I mean, I'd achieved my childhood dream with that. I mean, I dreamt of finding a Roman hoard since I was 12. So to, you know, to find a, a Roman hoard and one which is so significant is, is amazing. It is the find of a lifetime. It's the find of a lifetime. George immediately contacted the local museum service to ensure that the hoard was properly curated. They'll keep some of the coins. The majority will be auctioned next month. This, one of the highlights depicting the Roman Emperor Caligula from AD 38. And this of Emperor Claudius. It's expected to reach £3,000. Suffolk has proved rich pickings for historians. The Milden Hall treasure from the 4th century, found in 1942. And, of course, the world-famous Hoxon Hoard, 15,000 Roman coins and jewels. On the East Coast, it's very fertile land, but it hasn't been developed much compared to the rest of England. And the Celtic capital was initially Camelodunum, or Colchester as we know now, and the Romans settled there very quickly after they invaded Britain. So it was strategically a very important part of the country. So this is your lone little treasure trove. This is my little treasure trove. We so we've got here? a selection of finds here. This is a Roman ring. This dates to the 1st and 2nd century AD. And I remember the first time I actually found it, I slid out my little finger just like that. And this huge surge <laughs> of adrenaline just shot across my body. The first person to wear that ring in 2000 years. Exactly. The coins could reach £75,000 at auction, which George will share with the landowner. But it's not about the money. He says it's all about the history. Alex Dunlop, BBC News. Well, George joins us now. Good morning, George. Uh, now, apparently you were inspired by Indiana Jones as a child, which I'd never have guessed, judging by your hat. <laughs> How did you feel when you found this hoard? No, oh, good morning. Um, it was just the most magical moment. Um, so, I mean, I first started history hunting when I was about four years old, and that was from watching Indiana Jones. And, I mean, my grandma gave me my first metal detector at 12 years old, and from then on, I've just been absolutely passionate about history. Just tell us about the, the process of finding it, because looking at that, I mean, that is typical of Suffolk, a huge field. I mean, you could have started anywhere in, uh, you know, in, in East Anglia. How did you narrow it down? How did that lead you to, the, to finding the right spot? Yeah, so the evening before the discovery, I was looking at Roman roads and ancient trackways um, in this particular area of Suffolk. And I spotted this strange crop mark in the corner of a field. And it turned out that this was a spring which had been filled in. Now, with springs and water sources in general, um, hordes have been known to be buried near them. So for me, they're always worth a search. Uh, now, obviously, I didn't know I was going to find this huge Roman horde and, well, what turned out to be the largest one of its kind. Um, but it's always, you know, you had to be done. And the next morning I went there and, well, the rest was history. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Very good. Um, I mean, the, the, uh, finding something like this is incredible, but is that the particular period of interest uh, of, of history that you are most interested in? Or, um, I, know, I don't know, were you disappointed that it wasn't medieval coins, for example? What, what would be your ultimate find? Or was this it? <laughs> No, I mean, this was it. So uh, we have a Roman road which adjoins our farm in Suffolk. So Roman history has always been just an absolute passion for me. So to find what turned out to be Britain's largest Claudian rain hoard uh, was just unbelievable. And I mean, the first coin I found from the hoard, it was a denarius of Julius Caesar, which dated to around 46 to 47 AD, uh, BC, sorry. And I mean, that itself was a find of a lifetime. And then I find another one and then another one and then within a couple of hours I had 180 of those type of denarii and 
it was at that point I actually phoned my dad, David, just to tell him the news. And he came over straight away. And for two nights he slept on the, on the, on the actual hole. So he's a bit of the unsung hero when it comes to the story, my dad. <laughs> yeah, and George, I, I hope your dad is going to uh, partake in some of the rewards for this as a result. No, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to buy him a pint. Uh, he did, <laughs> he did so well to to do that. I should, I should hope so. <laughs> the only thing I will say about two dad, nights, two nights the... sleeping out in the in the open air, guarding the hall. Two nights. Uh, <laughs> and he gets a pint. I mean, that's yeah. the least I think. Um, just out of interest, this is the biggest haul of, of Roman coins, you said. But how rare are these to find? I mean, this type of hoard is extremely rare. And then when you combine that with the fact there's also Iron Age coins from this, um, in this hoard as well, it just makes it almost, almost unique. Um, we have 24 gold staters um, in the hoard as well. So that it's a it's a unique mix of of coins and very special indeed. Are you going to keep any of them? So, um, well, sixty eight of the coins have been acquired by the British Museum and the Ipswich Museums, and the remaining coins were disclaimed to the landowner and me. So we've we're going to keep around eight coins each, and the rest are being sold at Noonan's Mayfair on September the eighteenth. Now, I plan to, to be there, and I'm going to actually bid on some coins as well, just to see if I can get some more back. <laughs> what? Why, have you, why have you got to bid on them? Could you not keep more than eight? No, no, we'll, I'll bid on them. Um, it's, it's basically, we don't want to compromise the hoard's integrity, so we'll keep a few, but the, the really important ones, they'll be, they'll be for sale as well, and I'll see if I can uh, I'll try and buy some. <laughs> Are there any that you've got your eye on in particular? Well, I mean, there's some lovely coins in the hoard. One of them is a Denarius of Caligula. So, I mean, I think that's valued at around £2,000. But, you know, for me, it's, it's not about the money. It's never been about the money. For me, metal detecting and history hunting in general is just the love of history. And you go out there, you really ne never know what you're going to find. Mm. So um, it's just it's a, it's a magical hobby like that. It's, and it's not about the money, but it is about the coins. Um, have you got any of your finds to show us? Yeah, I've got some finds here. So we've got a selection here. So this is, um, this is actually one of my favourite finds. Um, now, bearing in mind, I've found two Roman hordes um, in total. So this one here, I'm not sure if you can see yeah, it. Yeah, hold it up nice and close to the camera because, is, uh, uh, called, so we can uh, see it. Yeah. There we go. So this is a seal matrix. It's, yeah, it's a seal matrix, and it dates to the 12th and 13th century. Now, these were used to validate a document, and they were impressed into hot melted wax. And what's quite special about this find is this was found behind our farmhouse in one of the meadows, um, and it's got an inscription, a Latin inscription around the edge. I'm not sure if you can see that. Just about, yes. And it's got a cross in the middle. Yeah. So um, after a bit of research, it turned out that this seal matrix translated into the seal of Philip Govan. Now, there's a chance that Philip Govan might have lived at our farmhouse as when I was about 12 years old, I found a tremendous amount of medieval pottery. So there's evidence that someone might have lived there during that time and it could have been Philip. That is incredible. Just very briefly in a sentence, uh, George, as we're running out of time, where do you go from here? You've set the bar high. In yeah. a sentence, what's next? Well, what's next? So I've been fortunate to give numerous talks about my story and I've actually just written a book as well about my history hunting adventures. So um, that's that's all rather exciting. Um, as for the next hoard, well, I'm going to keep looking and see what, see what I can find. Uh, well, best of luck with that, George, and thank you for joining us today. No, thank you very much.